and Jim Cambata from the Intape Mega Corporation. Were you listening to that, Jim? Uh, no, I was, I was listening to you still. <laughs> I was listening to it. I reckon he's about 21 years old. You reckon? Yeah. I would say so. <laughs> that, shows how much, that shows how much Mark Riley do, knows anyway. So, Mark Riley, uh, Jim Cambata, with us once more. Always welcome guests on the, on the wire. Thank you. I must say, I like your shirt uh, this time, Actually, uh, it's Mark. one of the dandies. The Waterfoot Dandy gave me this about Is a few it? months ago. Yes. He's got, he does have a good uh, dress taste, the Waterfoot Dandy, though, doesn't he? Oh, of course. A oh. dandy. He is a dandy. Indeed, indeed. So what have you been doing since your last... Uh, it's, how long ago? It's about... Uh, mm. hey, it's at least, mm. isn't it? At least. It must well, be. Yeah. Or even more. But, um, well, well what have we done? What have we done? We've, uh, we went to Holland. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we did a short tour of Holland, which was uh, recorded. Uh, we've released a live LP of one of the gigs in Amsterdam. Um, we've been playing around here, as always, and we've done a Peel session, which has just been released as well. Plug, yeah, plug, plug, yeah. Plug, plug, plug. <laughs> That's just come out, hasn't it, on, uh, I've got it somewhere other, hold on. I've lost it. Oh, no, here it is. That's right. Uh, four A's from Maida Vale, Mark right, Riley yeah. with the Creepers, on in tape records, but it's, uh, it's the stuff that was, um, for the Peel session, which I think is quite interesting, because I think last time you came on we talked about, uh, the zoom-in costs of recording records, and, uh... It doesn't cost you anything to record this one, has it? Well, you buy the tapes off them for about 300 quid, but that's still very reasonable, you know, for, yeah. the, for the gear they've got. I think they've got probably the best gear in the country, you know. Down, well, they churn it out, don't they, down there? They certainly do. I mean, there's a lot of bands in every day of the week. What intrigues me, of course, about this uh, forays from uh, Made of Vale, amongst other things, is uh, the old brass section. I mean, uh, Mark and the Creepers go kind of Dexy Midnight Runners era. Wash your mouth. <laughs> now, we've got Mike here, he plays sax on it. Uh, John, John Hunter from the June Brides plays a lovely bit of trumpet on Bad of Woking, which you'll hear shortly. And uh, I was just taking up the alto sax myself. Now, I'm no good on it, but I'm working on it, you know. The most intriguing thing about the record is the cover. Hello, Tony Husband. I should be listening. Is this Tony who came with you last time, or does the uh, No, no, that was Patrick. No, uh -huh. that was Patrick, which is Mike's brother. Yes, he is. It's all getting very complicated. <laughs> no, <laughs> Tony Husband, is, uh, he's, he was like the cartoonist of the year, uh, last year, I think it was, and he does uh, he does the yob sing in Private Eye mm. every, every issue. Oh, right, yeah. And he used to do... Uh, the bastards, pardon me, wash my mouth. In a well, that's what hit. he did, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, right. Yeah, well, that's that's, what... that's gone under. But uh, I'll just—it's very pithy, isn't it? They're very pithy. You got to be careful well, you say that as well. It is yeah. most yeah. of the time. Yeah. Well, which is that's how he uh, manages to this kind of stuff. I must say that um, it, these four songs we've got: uh, Black Dwarf, Border Walking, which we'll hear in a second, Going Right, <clears throat> and uh, mm. Cold Fish. Is—is—is uh, is, is there any kind of I can't put my finger on it, but it, apart from the brass section, it, it sounds kind of different to normal uh, Creeper stuff. And I that's don't not, know. That, that's not because it's produced at Made of Vale either. I think I'm slowly learning how to sing a bit better. <laughs> I mean sound... that, you know, it's sort of, it's slowly dawned on me how not to sound like a total prat. <laughs> <laughs> they sound more, the, the songs sound more kind of songish, you know what I mean? Mm, well, well I thought you were going accidental. to say mature there or something. No, no, they sound, they sound more songish in a way, you know. Mm, I don't know. I don't know what I can say about that. I mean, other people are best judging that, really. You know. Well, obviously, that... it's no here we go down or anything like that. But uh, I don't. I don't sit down and actually set out to write a, a song mm. of any mould. You know, it just comes out. Well, let the people judge then. Uh, which, Fair enough. Which turntable have I got it on? That one. I've got it on this one. We'll play it now. This is uh, Bard of Walking. We'll talk about the songs uh, themselves a bit later. <laughs> one, two, a uh, one, two, three, four. <laughs> Storyteller, like a bad of walking, deal with 
This one's a cover version. It's uh, what is it? Oh yeah, it's called Babies on Fire. It's done by this ball bloke from Middlesbrough. Colino. The butcher. Not the proper Eno, just the butcher called Eno. Right guys, I don't know the words to this either. Old story, but true. Okay. there uh, Mark eh? No it's not true actually it's a PA tape so you don't pick up all the clapping oh, I see yeah, I, I see. just thought I'd tell you because they were going crazy <laughs> they were going wild down in wild, Amsterdam freaking out <laughs> hey man uh, this, there's some uh, bitter stuff in there on this uh, four A's from Made of Ale mm. it, it sounds fairly bitter I mean, it, it sound, it's so bitter, it's almost, you know, singer-songwriterish, you know, Leonard Cohenish, that kind of stuff. Oh, Speed don't it up. say these things It to is. Me, please, do. It is. It How is, do you mean, though. what, the lyrical content? Yeah, that's well, right. Well, it's not unusual, is it? I'm not the happiest little crooner around, am I? No, but they're more, uh, they're more directed, these, aren't they? You know, I mean, yeah. some of the other stuff would say, what's, what's that, what's that, what's he talking about now? But this, I mean, some of it's obvious, isn't it, some of this? Yeah. Well, obvious. Blatantly obvious. We won't better not talk about who it's actually directed to. T.W., no. <laughs> we won't bother talking about Paul Weller. Should we talk... Uh, that's it, Board of Walkies. I, I love that. my favourite uh, one, actually, on, on the uh, the cartoons which were done by this fella. Tony Osmond, yeah. Tony. There's one for the Board of Woking where there's uh, four beetle heads on coconut shies and uh, somebody saying, Dimwit well, uh, with an all-you-need-is-love T-shirt mm. shooting uh, the heads in two. You know, well, it's like, you know, it's the lyrics they say are... Uh, what does it take to get the Beatles back together? Three bullets and a gun. 
shocking jokes about John Paul, George and Ringo mm. getting back together. I wouldn't tell those jokes, never. Yeah, right. Sad little number. And uh, and, and this, I don't know whether they'll have time to play uh, Cold Fish, but I, I, I love that song. That, that's a bizarre little tale, isn't it? Cold mm. Fish. I mean, we're Nonsensical. digging up some Eddie Cochran fan here from... <laughs> <laughs> no, well, that was uh, Tony's interpretation. I actually say in the song, I wish I had Eddie's head, as in, I wish I had Eddie Cochran's sort of pop sensibilities, you know, but yeah. Tony translated it literally, and I'm digging, <laughs> digging Eddie Cochran up and chopping his head off. <laughs> Which is just about as subtle as a sledgehammer, but it's groovy stuff. Uh, but I think that's my favourite, actually, of, of, uh, of how the song sounds on the EP. Yeah. I think we'll uh, play that, because it's my favourite, isn't it? Well, it's weird, actually, because... We went, we went and recorded it, then went for a drink. We came back to mix it when they changed all the leads and that. And he said, right, we'll listen to it, and then we'll decide what, what I'll do with it, and then we'll mix it, which usually takes about three quarters of an hour. And he played it. I said, no, that'll do, keep it like that. And the engineer said, no, you can't do that, you've got to mix it. I said, well, that's it. That's the sound I would try and get, you know. So he said, oh, OK, then, you know. So he, he left it as that, but, he, yeah, it's got a good sound to it. It's got that little kind of uh, Eddie Cochran kind of shuffling thing underneath, hasn't it? Which, yeah, and his uh, hand clapping on That's it, right, and all that know. kind of bit. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll hear it in a minute. Let's talk about in-tape now, because uh, there's been some uh, moving around uh, on in-tape, hasn't there, of late? Because uh, I did uh, read something in the press a little while ago about some dissatisfaction with... Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, no, we're dissatisfied with the label. Yeah, we were just talking about that whilst the last two tracks were playing. That's not true, yeah, yeah, no, continue on in tape, do they? For the, for the time being, yeah. Um, Come into the morning, Jim, so... Contractually, the, the band uh, will be finished with in tape at the end of this year. Yeah. And uh, the band, I realised with this LP, if it doesn't sell X thousand copies or if there's not a, a big markup sales-wise, they're going to call it a day. Yeah. So we'll, we'll have a chat with the band and I... I'm not. I don't think the LP is very good, personally. But then again, you know, it's just a personal level, not yeah. business-wise. We'll still promote it. Well, I, find, I must say, I find it difficult to listen to myself. But uh, we'll be playing a track probably next week. Uh, perhaps, you don't uh, have to, Steve. Well, I mean, uh, it's, it's, n it's, it's new, and uh, of, yeah, that's yeah, our no policy. Uh, but we'll be playing a track next week. Perhaps, uh, yeah, yeah, no, could be moving on to um, yeah, WA. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, but but what about? Uh, I read uh, also in the in the paper about uh, the membranes uh, leaving creation. Yeah. Well, it's weird, actually, because uh, John Robb's been a friend of ours for a while. I've known him for about six years or something. You know, he used to, mm. the membranes used to support the fauna and him, so I knew him then. But he's been coming to clubs with us of late, and uh, we were interested in the membranes before they went to creation when they came off abstract, I think it was, or criminal, criminal damage. That's right. Mm. And uh, we were interested, but obviously creation at the time were a really hip label and they had a lot of push with the Jesus Mary chain so they thought that would be the right decision at the time but it obviously wasn't you know mm. so we've signed them now I think uh, what I would like to see happen to the membranes actually is uh, they don't make any more albums you know because I thought they got the, the life was far far too long yeah. and an there's album some great for the stuff impact. on it but people and nearly everybody says it's unlistenable all the way through yeah, yeah so even I mean, one side of it <laughs> let's be totally honest John's in Europe now so we can talk well, I tell John the same thing. I mean, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. it's just saying I brought out a new record for a while, so I've been able to tell him. But uh, I mean, I think they should be kind of constrained to seven-inch singles or twelve-inch singles, and uh, you know, three or four songs yeah. or whatever. Well, the thing that grabbed me about the membranes was Spike Milligan's tape recorder, which I reckon was the best record that year. You know. Mm. Which might have got lost on the LP, you know. You so, might have been the last track on side one and nobody would have ever heard it because you don't <laughs> listen to the, L the LP all the way through. So, uh, what, is there some stuff due from the membranes then on in, on in tape or is it just as. It'll, it'll be next year, yeah. Mm. Double LP. <laughs> <laughs> Not triple, we're still negotiating that one. Live. <laughs> Actually, I want to get something in here. Um, we Fletch, our guitarist, is uh, hitting the road in a. Uh, well, when we get a new guitarist. Without with, the uh, band. Without the band, no, he's yeah. got he's got some other commitments, and he he couldn't really afford the time for both. Mm. So we are after a multi-talented Roy Castle type person mm. who can play both guitar and maybe keyboards. That would be nice. So if there's anybody out there with their aspirations to becoming a creeper, yeah. could they ring us on a oh six one nine six two eight six two eight at in tape nine Thank six you. nine six two eight. Let's let's do that number again nine six two eight six Two eight, and that's for Mark or Jim. Right. What what the kind of fringe benefits have been in the uh, creepers then? Five right? a night. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's the money. What's the fringe benefits? Fringe. I mean, well, Pete's got a nice fringe, hasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It depends which bar we go to, doesn't it? <laughs> I mean, are you looking for any type of uh, personality? You know, do they have just to... a human being. I mean, 
obviously we're not after Jimmy Page, you know, but um, well, we just want somebody that we can get along with. Mm. Who can play the songs? That's all we want, you know. Yeah, well, that cuts it down. That, that cuts it down a lot, doesn't it? Really? Yeah, because I don't get with anybody, <laughs> especially you. <Steve. laughs> and you, shut up. So, uh, so, is uh, how soon is the new guitarist needed then? No. Well, I mean, it's it's a totally amicable split. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, he's, he's gonna he's gonna uh, he's gonna uh, fulfil all his commitments. I mean, we're supposed to be going to America in January, so mm. if we've not got anybody by then, he'll be coming with us. You know, there's yeah. no problem. It's just that. Uh, the sooner we get somebody, the, the sooner we can start working on new material with a new person, you know. Right, so the number to ring is uh, Jim uh, or, or Mark on uh, Intape, so it's a Manchester number, yeah. and it's 061 962 Right, we'll give you the fiver afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have another track from the uh, EP, right? I think this is on the uh, the live album as well, which is called, what's it called, the live album? Uh, Warts and All. Warts and All, mm. live in Amsterdam. Uh, the EP is four A's from Made of Ale. This track's uh, going rate. Right. This is a bit of a rude uh, cartoon, <laughs> isn't it? On the uh... well, again, that's old Tony Osborne's interpretation. He's got a warped mind, that lad. I'll tell you. That's right, because I looked at the cover and I thought, hey, this is a bit rude. Uh, what's this yeah. song about? And I was listening, to it and it never. Yeah, well, it actually, up, no, it I did, I did uh, sort of plant that one in Tony's mind. It's the the cartoon for the people who obviously can't see. It's just a stripper, mm. a big sort of obese stripper. But yeah. uh, the only sort of the only sort of reference to that in the song is uh it's about going back and forth to London to play gigs and getting a fiver a night, whatever. But it's uh, up and down, up and down, strippers, yeah. knickers, up and down, long M1, long M6, you see. So don't think it's about strippers <laughs> or anything rude. OK, this is Mark Rowland Creepers uh, going right. <laughs>
We're just kind of having a chat there about uh, the Velvet Underground, which we'll come back to perhaps on air. Yeah, I did say um, the Velvets. It was in 1971. Okay, Grandad, don't rub it in. Uh, and <laughs> when uh, you and Mark were uh, like uh, 11 or something like that, yeah. I was four years old, if you don't mind. Uh, four years old. Well, you looked 11. and um, <laughs> Mature. <laughs> Uh, and there was that Lou Reed was there and Mo Tucker and Sterling Morrison, but uh, it was Doug Yule and not uh, John Cale, which was a bit disappointing. But uh, they were all right. I mean, nothing special. Yeah. And that was that. Anyway, the June Brides uh, was it? Were Jim come into the microphone? Don't move the microphone. Just come into it. And uh, that's uh, the new single from the June Brides on Intake Records. No place called home. I was saying to uh, Jim whilst it was playing, a bit of a surprise that the June Brides came on, came on to Intake because uh, after that eight million stories yeah. uh, album on Pink. I think a lot of people expect them to sign up for WEA or Virgin or something like that. Yeah, it was basically all the press they had. I mean, in the space of two weeks, they had mm. the enemy front cover mm. and the uh, really big, chunky page interviews in, in the, the, the other tabloids, but they basically didn't get that major company interest. I think they thought they they thought they would. They had stiff were interested, but there was no real there was no re real financial commitment there. So, uh, I and mean, then they have signed to Intape. Or will do before Christmas. I think it's maybe surprised people that they're still an independent label. Yeah, and will still be seen in the independent charts. But well, what's also strange is uh, like the label they're on of Pink in London, and I think they are a London band, aren't they? they're yeah, based, based in London, in... and they come up to uh, Manchester to, which is you know where the quality is. Where, where, the, where the quality is right, but uh, I mean it's usually all the other way. The traffic, isn't it? It is. Yeah, uh, I'm not thought to that angle. Um, no, I mean it, it comes down from. Straight. It's it comes down to a straight thing, really, of uh, the guy at Pink really wasn't up to scratch for what they were doing. I mean, Terry and Jerry came from Birmingham to Manchester because Jim's doing such a good job, you know. Mm. That's mm. the way it goes, I mean. As, uh, the Janitors uh, was one of our favourite singles as, as, as well, Jim. That's uh, got a lot of good uh, press. Yeah, it was a cracking single. That. So they'll have, they'll have something out um, again around February, March time. We seem to have this sort of great rush of releases at the moment. We've got well, a hell of a lot going on October, November time. Mm. And uh, February, March next year, we'll have... 
nearly all the bands releasing either singles or well, all singles really. Uh, are the janitors really as dirty as they sound uh, as, as well? I mean, the, the live the live act. They're very raw. Yeah, very uh, scruffy as well. <laughs> Never no, mind, we'll smart them up. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get them in. Uh, I told them that, I told the membranes they should wear Beatles suits. Mm. I think they go far if they wear Beatles suits. They could have scruffy. You could have a kind of in tape livery, you know, like jackets with piped edges and that, that kind of stuff. Like could that. do. Good to me. <laughs> <laughs> Terry and Jerry, they're still uh, on in tape no, as well. They're still in tape, yeah, and will be up till 1980, end of 1986. Uh, the new album from Lubbock to Clintwood East, uh, yeah. uh, an absolutely inspired uh, choice of title. Well, did it come from uh, them? Yes, yeah, well? yeah, I, I can come up with that. Yeah, I think uh, <laughs> Buddy Ollie was born in Lubbock. That's right, yeah. Lubbock, Lubbock to Clintwood East. I know, um, I think it's. Uh, I always forget which is Terry and which is Jerry. That's which Jerry. Which? That's Jerry, that one. Jerry. Jerry's the scruffy looking one. Jerry's All the bands are in tape are scruffy. <laughs> Jerry's the tall one with dark hair, right? And Terry's the small one with uh, blonde hair. But uh, uh, Jerry, Terry. Jerry. Jerry. He's done some other stuff uh, by himself, hasn't yeah. he? With, uh, yeah, the man uh, upstairs, are called. That's right, which is, which is totally different, really, from Terry and Jerry, isn't it? It's like swinging jazz, isn't it? Yeah. He's, he's, he's got this big, his big dream is to, like, you know, have a massive sort of backup symphony orchestra behind mm. him, so. Uh, yeah, he's, he's got a lot of things in the pipe. He's a really talented bloke, so there's a lot of things in the pipeline. I don't know whether he'll be able to keep the two bands going because, I mean, you know, he loves performing live mm, and mm. he's getting a bit of pressure from the man upstairs with Terry and Jerry doing so many dates now. That's right. Uh, and Terry and Jerry, you were saying earlier on, uh, looking to uh, get Terry and Jerry on Wogan uh, in the near future, are we? Well, we're going through the... Uh, well, that's why that's why a band like, bands like Terry and Jerry and the June Brides can commit themselves to the label because we do do things professionally and realise that those two bands can cross over mm -hmm. and uh, compete with the big boys. So, uh, I mean, Terry and Jerry, from the moment we, we saw them, me and Mark saw them, we, you know, they can go from doing a John Peel session the day before to appearing on Des O'Connor or Little Lenage, and there's absolutely yeah, no halt yeah. with that band. I mean, Emotion-wise, they're, they're a salesman's dream. <laughs> that's right. I mean, they're so incredibly mobile, aren't they? Yeah. Know, from, yeah from one place yeah. to another, apart from... Uh, not, not just their instruments as well. You know, washboards aren't too difficult to carry. You can take no, one on the bus, can't you? No, carrying a double bass down the M1, though. You'll find out. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, and on British Rail, I bet they give some stick as well. Let's hear a track from uh, Terry and Jerry's album anyway. This is... Uh, it's called uh, From Lubbock to Clinkwood East. Another one on in tape. And this one's uh, a sea shanty for the gravy boat. Intriguing stuff.
And there it ends. While we're chatting again now, <laughs> never mind the records whilst we're playing it, I think they weren't playing were they, when we, we put them on. Oh, no respect. And here we are, chatting away. No respect. You must feel really upset about stuff like that. That was uh, Cold Fish anyway, the one about Eddie Cochran that we were talking about uh, earlier on. And uh, that's the last from Mark Rowley and the Creepers, and the last from Intape today. So I must thank uh, Jim and Mark for coming in. But before uh, they depart, there's uh, a gig I noticed that you're going to be playing at the uh, Twine Club in Preston on the 4th of December. Yeah. Now then, I don't know if everybody knows this, but what is it? Is it the Caribbean Club or something? Because when we played there last yeah. time, they just put, Dave put, like, at the Preston Twine Club. So everybody's going, ringing up, trying to find the <laughs> Twine Club. But it was at the Caribbean, so... Yeah, I forget the street it is, but it's, it's in uh, the... I think it's near the M MFI. That's right, it's quite near MFI. Canute Street. Canute Street, well... Wow. Silly Canute. There's, <laughs> near MFI. There's a song in this somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I'll go away and write that one right now. It's in the St Paul's area of Preston, and it's uh, the Twine Club, and uh, Mark's playing there on the 4th of December. Have you got any other gigs and things coming up? Gigs, you know? mm. Hey? Yeah. Um, well, we're doing London... Uh, but that's a bit far for the local mm. chappies to go to, I expect. Bristol, mm. which is also quite far. Yeah. And, um, I oh, I keep forgetting. <laughs> I don't know. Preston, London, Bristol. Don't know. It's not Manchester and it's not Preston, it's not Blackburn. Oh, I don't know. That's shocking. That, oh, well, you're on at the Twine Club on the 4th of December. Yeah, the Twine Club on the 4th of is, is there going to be any special uh, in tape Christmas celebrations at all? Jim's remembered it. Oxford. Oxford, Oxford yeah. Oh, <laughs> Christ, that's why I forgot. Yeah, it's a free gig oh, to all the rugby playing Oxford students. Yeah, oh, God. Just down the Looking road. Looking forward to that one. Just down the, is there going to be any in tape Christmas uh, party or anything like that? Mark mentioned well, this last yeah, week. I don't know, I quite fancy it if Jim's paying. Yeah, I looked in the bank. We'll invite mm. you. Your bank bonds. Well, we're thinking of an on-the-wire Christmas party. Hey, we'll yeah. give you a ring Do and then... Uh, yeah, all right then, we'll, gi we'll give you a ring. We'll find out when it's going to be, but it's uh, probably the Sunday before Christmas anyway. Sounds good Sunday. to me. All right, and uh, we'll get a few uh, free coffees in and things like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no expense spared, eh? <laughs> hey, what? Christmas spirit. <laughs> hey, what? Nice to see you again, Mark, anyway. And, uh, Pleasure, uh, nice to see you. Really enjoy this. See you, Jim. Cheers, Steve. And uh, good luck with the developing in a mega corporation <laughs> in Thank tape. Uh, carrying on now with... Uh <laughs>